Akikan 28 was quietly released last week. And after a little bit of time to be able to analyze and play with the software, today we're taking a deep dive into the latest features, the improvements, and how it stacks up against ICAD 27. First of all, let's take a look at some of the new features in ICAD 28, and I'll use the term new relatively loosely. First and foremost, ARCAD 28 introduces Keynotes. Now, Keynotes is relatively new to ARCAD if you were not a CI Tools subscriber. For those of us here in Australia, we've been using CI Tools Keynotes for years, and it has been an incredible asset to ARCAD. It allows you to streamline all of your text documentation and make mass changes rather than manual updates. So by transitioning Keynotes from CI Tools directly into ARCAD, that's going to save us all a little bit of money here in Australia because we're not going to have to pay for that upgrade necessarily, which is awesome. They've also improved their real-time rendering. Now, looking at these side by side in the 3D window between Arcad 27 and Arcad 28, there is really no different. But Graphisoft is saying they've improved it enough that it genuinely matters to them. So we'll give them the win. We'll say it's a little bit better. The real-time rendering between 27 and 28 is near identical, I wouldn't be thinking of upgrading just because of this feature. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video where I'll actually give you my opinion if it's worth upgrading to Arcan 28 or not. But for now, let's move on to the last major upgrade in Arcan 28, and that is the one-click lifecycle assessment. Now, if you have your lifecycle assessment data implemented into your Arcad template, this is going to be awesome. You're going to be able to do lifecycle assessments in a matter of seconds. However, if you do not have your lifecycle assessment data implemented, like I guarantee 99.99% of firms won't, then it's a relatively useless feature and it's not one click wonder. But for those in that specific niche that are looking to do lifecycle assessments that are not looking to export this to an external lifecycle assessment consultant, then this is a huge win for you as well. There have been a number of improvements in ARCAD 28 over the 27, not necessarily new features. So let's take a look at these before we dive into the performance statistics improvements of 28. So one thing the Graphisoft focused on heavily was the improvement of a BIMX. There are a number of features that BIMX has been improved on, including sections, hiding objects, and so much more. However, that's not really the purpose of this video, it's more so about ARCHICAD itself. BIMX is a great addition, but it's not necessarily the be all end all. They've now also implemented the AI visualizer directly into ARCHICAD 28, as opposed to having to install a third party plugin. The plugin in 27 was an absolute nightmare to install. I made a whole video separate about that, so you feel free to check that out if you wish. However, it is now directly in ARCAD 28 if you wish to use some AI features. They've also improved how well and how quickly Revit files are imported into ARCAD 28 and the collaboration between ARCAD 28 and Revit 2025. For smaller firms, this basically means nothing at all to you because most structural engineers for small firms are still using AutoCAD. It is too much of a burden to move into 3D engineering and Revit. So having better Revit files for small firms isn't going to mean much. If you're operating or working in a large firm, however, most of your engineers will most likely be in Revit or a similar 3D BIM software. So this is a great win for larger firms. They've improved the MEP designer as well. So for all of your mechanical, electrical and plumbing services, this has had a huge upgrade. Again, very niche for the larger firms. Second to last is their point cloud implementation has improved significantly. Now I can see point cloud being the way of the future. However, right now in 2024, almost at the start of 2025, what I'm seeing and in the real world is point cloud data is very expensive for clients. And most clients are not even considering this because they can't grasp what actual benefit it provides to them. So having the surveyor out to go and do a full point cloud survey on an existing property is costing tens of thousands of dollars compared to a basic survey of the property, which costs a couple of thousand dollars. Now, the information is obviously significantly better in a point cloud data system, and we can pick up anything that might have been missed. However, this value just isn't being conveyed to clients enough, and therefore I just generally don't believe it is valuable information or a valuable 
improvement in ArchiCAD 20 at it that is going to affect too many firms. Last but not least in the improvements is the home screen has had a refresh. Huge hooray! No, I'm just genuinely joking. This means absolutely nothing. The home screen has had a bit of a refresh and the tooltips inside ArcCAD have some live demonstrations. Now, cool, if you're new to ArcCAD for about 30 seconds, you're going to be able to learn it a little bit quicker or you're going to go in and watch one of my videos and learn it 10 times faster. Either way, I see this improvement as an almost time-wasting activity that doesn't benefit anybody in the architecture space. A little bit harsh, but that's just the way I feel, unfortunately. They are the main new features and improvements in ArcCAD 28. Now, before I give my opinion on all of this, which is toward the end of the video, I want to break down the performance improvements, especially in considering 27 was such a huge jump, with Apple Silicon especially. So let's take a look at small projects and large projects to see how it compares against 27. First of all, the install time for me personally on a Mac M1 Studio with an Ultra chip took about seven minutes. That's not too bad, but it still took a little bit of time to install the software. To load a small project in ArcCAD 27 takes about 12 seconds from start to open using an ArcCAD 27 file. To load a 27 file in 28, so having to convert it, takes approximately 11 seconds. So ArcCAD 28 is loading files faster even when considering the conversion times. Switching between views both in 2D and in 3D is almost instant on small project files. So there's no added benefit here for 28. What was interesting is if you're using the internal rendering system, 27 is for some reason faster. Now I'll read these numbers out to you. External render in 27 took two minutes and 26 seconds and external render in 28 took four minutes and 42 seconds. All internal renders, same sort of scenario. 27, two minutes and 15 seconds. 28, three minutes and 14 seconds. When comparing the quality it is almost identical, there is not much of an improvement in 28. So if you are using internal rendering for ARCAD for whatever reason, I'm not sure why, especially considering programs like Enscape and Twinmotion exist and Twinmotion is completely free that you can download at any point in time. I don't know really why you be using that software, but hey, each their own. 27 is absolutely destroying 28, but the rendering space for internal ARCAD renders. Let's move on to a significantly larger file. Now, this is a three-story commercial development, tens of thousands of square meters of commercial letterboard area, and it is a completed construction documentation package. It was originally done in ARCAD 25. So this allowed me to compare maximum load times, including conversion of old files. In ArcCAD 27, this file took four minutes to load. In ArcCAD 28, it took three and a half minutes. In both 27 and 28, switching between floor plans was almost instant considering the size of the file once they were loaded and cached into the software. If they were cached, it took a little bit of time, but once they were in the software, and preloaded, it was easy to switch between. Where we then moved from a floor plan to an elevation, in ArcCAD 27, it took 24 seconds, whilst in ArcCAD 28, it took two seconds. Similarly to elevations to sections, 25 seconds in version 27 and four seconds in version 28. Now, there is a caveat to this, and that is the keynotes that we originally used in CI tools do not automatically convert into the keynotes built into ArchiCAD now in 28, which means none of the text data was there and available to us in 28 in the load times, nor were any of the sea iron coverings for both the roof and the external wall cuttings, which do add significant load times because they have a series of large hatches involved in the load of that. However, when comparing 3D loading times, changing between presets and views, ArcCAD 28 absolutely crushes it. ArcCAD 27 just doesn't keep up, even we were trying to load the exact same models. So I'd be confident in saying that ArcCAD 28 has a significant performance improvement over ArcCAD 27, especially when it comes to larger project files. So what's the verdict you might be asking? Well, I no longer need my notes, so let's pop that down for a minute. ArchiCAD 27 is phenomenal. It was a huge jump from 26 and even larger from 25. 
If you're on the ICANN 27 right now and you're a small to medium sized firm doing single residential, multi residential, mainly four, five, six stories, then I would not be inclined to upgrade to ICANN 28. If you are a large scale operation working on complex architectural projects, I'm talking billion dollar skyscrapers, stadiums, projects of that sort, then the performance improvements alone in ICAD 28 make it worth the upgrade. All the new improvements and all the new features mean absolutely nothing to architects in real world practice. They might make your life slightly easier, but in reality, you have your own template, you have your own workflows and work structure, which you've been following and you're training new staff on. So these new minor updates really aren't going to mean much. However, the performance improvements will. Your same hardware is going to be able to load files faster, meaning you're going to save hours every single month, which will eventually equate to the cost savings of the upgrade for ACAD 28. Anyway, that's all for me, team. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.